today I'm getting caught up on the first three days of the 30 days of improv quilt along. I think I should start out by defining improv because a lot of people mentioned in my last video in the comment section that they had never heard of improv. So um, let's start by sort of getting an idea of what improv is. There is no formal overarching unified definition for improv quilting. Everyone has a different opinion about it. It's not a, a one-size-fits-all thing. My favorite definition for improv quilting comes from jitterywingsquiltco.com. Improvisational quilting is quilting without design rules, boundaries, or specific intentions. While the basic quilting techniques of piecing, pressing, and trimming apply, the design is free, fluid, and flexible. The design is built as you go. This is an excerpt from a blog post called What is a Controlled Improv Quilt? I recommend you check out this blog post. It's worth the read. I'm going to link it in my description below. She talks about her personal progression of improv quilting, how she went from sort of a chaotic seat of your pants improv method to what she calls controlled improv. So I definitely recommend that article, blog post, whatever it is. I've got my three fabrics all stacked on top of each other here, and I'm just going to take a chunk off this corner. In the email newsletter, they talk about um, using scissors, cutting freehand with your rotary cutter, or cutting with a ruler. And I'm going to start um, with my ruler. And I'm going to try to limit myself to my smaller rulers here. And I'm not going to use them exactly. Basically, what I want to do is just have somewhere for my hand to sit so I don't accidentally cut myself. So I'm not going to um, use the sides exactly. It's more of a guideline than anything else. Oh, that did not go through. Did I get it? So close. Okay. So I'm going to set aside all the rest of this big chunk. Oh, and you know what? I should read the prompt, shouldn't I? <laughs> Monday says, keep it simple by just exploring cutting and piecing your strips. Okay, super simple. See how alternating the direction you piece your strips helps limit or exaggerate the wonk. Wonk being wonkiness. Okay, so I'm going to do simple strips, alternating directions. After I appease the cat. Okay, I pet the cat. I gave him treats. He should be distracted for a while. Um, so when I'm cutting the strips, I want to make sure I'm not cutting anything that is going to disappear into the seam allowance. So I always want to, well, I want to try to keep them above an inch at this point, and I can go smaller later on. Ooh, that one went wide. I think I should mention just one last time, I am a total beginner at this. I've done very tiny little bits of improv. All I know for sure is that I need to throw out the rules, get out of my head. Um, I'm not supposed to overthink. I'm just supposed to go with the flow and have fun with fabric. Okay. I'm just going to take a minute to separate them by color. One thing I like about this print here is that almost completely disappears if you turn it over. So it's sort of like having two fabrics for the price of one. Okay, so now when I think of alternating directions, I sort of think of log cabins. So what I'm gonna do is sort of a half log cabin. I think I'm gonna start with this. Let's see. I don't know how much of this you guys want to see because a lot of it's going to be just trying things out. Um, okay, so I'm not going to overthink. I decided that this is what I'm going to do. I'm not going to go back and forth. I'm going to sew right along this line. I wonder if improv piecers press after every stitching line. Um, I think I am. I think that's going to make it neater. I'm going to press this real quick. In the interest of staying true to this modern aesthetic, I've pressed my seams open, something I don't normally do. Um, so now I'm going to cut this 
I laid my ruler aside and set this over here and do my next branch. Oh, actually, maybe a thicker one. Okay, let's try that. Trim that. And then I'm going to purposefully use the wrong side of my fabric. So that when I fold it out, it'll look like that. Okay, I'm going to trim this up again. I feel like there's a more efficient way to do this, but I don't know it. And I'm going to break up this dark here. Actually, what if I added that? I'm going to add that. Interesting. Okay. This might end up looking very messy, but I'm going to just go with the flow. I have to keep reminding myself that. Go with the flow. On second thought, I'm not as huge of a fan of that big stripe as I thought, so I'm going to just cut that down the middle and move it over here. I think I'm going to like that better. Okay, I like that a little better. Um, I think I'm going to do a big chunk here. So one of these. This. Maybe. I think I'm going to go with that. Okay, so I'm going to trim this first. Then I'm going to sew that and then that. I'm going to consider this block as done. I'm not going to trim it down, but I'm aiming for something that can be trimmed down to four and a half inches um, with some wiggle room so I can move it around and see what composition I like best. Um, but I'm going to consider this done and set it aside and then trim it down later on. Next up, Tuesday's prompt. It says, play with scale and see how piecing skinny strips feels different to super wide strips and how it can add complex detail to your block. Okay, I did sort of do that already, but I wasn't paying attention to it. So I'm going to focus in specifically with chunky strips. And I'm going to use more white this time and intersperse it with some skinny strips. So this one is less than an inch. So that could be really skinny. I'll trim a couple of these down too. I'll make this one like three quarters of an inch. That'll be, that'll finish really skinny. And then intersperse with white. Actually, I have a couple of these little pieces that I cut off, I trimmed off from my other block, and I'm going to piece this together, sort of like that maybe. Okay, so I'm just gonna take these to the machine and chain piece, and figure out something to do with these. I keep getting so absorbed in what I'm doing, I forget to frame it up on camera correctly. Um, so I'm gonna try it, I promise I'm gonna try to work on that. For this thing, this little unit here, I'm going to just trim it up a little bit, get that extra off, just so it's easier at the machine. Okay, so that's looking neater. I've got some skinny, I've got some chunky, I want to put it together with these strips here. I'm thinking see. I think I want these greens to touch here. There's some good definition. I think this is what I'm going to do. Actually, let's see. Mm, what do you think? I know you can't tell me. I'm 
gonna go like this. Wow, <laughs> look how tiny those stripes are finishing. It's just a little bit, like it's like three eighths on that one. A little more than three eighths on that one. Wow, I like how that looks actually. And I like how the negative space is working out. I don't think I'm gonna add anything uh, more. So I think after that seam is sewn, I'll have reached my size that I want. So I'll sew this last seam real quick. So I'm gonna consider prompt to done. And also, I just realized if you turn it on its side, it looks like a little face, sunglasses and a smile. And now I'm never gonna be able to unsee that. Um, but that is, I think, just barely big enough to fit. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna set that aside and start on prompt three. Wednesday's prompt says, lean into the wonk by combining your freehand cutting while piecing your strips all in the same direction. See how much wonk you can build. Okay, I just did that. I need to start reading ahead, I think, because I did just embrace the wonk and piece them all in the same direction. Um, so I guess I need to come up with a new way to interpret that so I don't do the same thing over again. Okay, I just took my own advice and I read ahead. And tomorrow's prompt says, pull out that rotary cutter and give your strip sets a fun slice and sew it back together. So I'm actually, I think you might consider this cheating. I don't know. I'm just going to piece them like this so that they're all ready to go to cut up tomorrow. And I can add some new fabric then. So I'm just going to arrange these in a way that I like. I wish I had some more white left to break up all this color. Okay, I'll just do that. Just a real simple panel that I can cut up tomorrow. There we go. Simple little unit panel, whatever you want to call it. Done. Um, I am a little worried about how watchable these videos are going to be because I really have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so if you could leave me suggestions on how I can improve these videos and make them more interesting for you, let me know in the comments below. Wow, when I put them all together like this, it's really very interesting looking. Very dynamic. Personally, this was a very fun process for me. Um, that's why there are so many quiet spots. I'll try to edit those out. Um, but it was a great thought experiment on how I wanted to cut things and arrange them. And it was just fun to let go and not measure anything and just let things sort of develop. Um, so yeah, it was a lot of fun. Is, are these all successful and to the letter for the prompts? Probably not, but I would definitely recommend if you haven't tried this out, try it. It's fun and also it would be a great way to use up scraps. I also want to thank you so much for sticking around to the end of this video. The videos and the improv piecing are both sort of experimental for me. It's a new format, more free form, less rules, so that's been fun. I'll see you again soon. Bye!